Okay, the first problem says the density of the Earth's crust 10 kilometers under the surface is 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. The speed of longitudinal seismic waves at that depth is 5.4 kilometers per second. What is the bulk modulus of the crust at that depth? Okay, what's the bulk modulus? So we're given uh, the depth, we're given the uh, density down there, we're given the speed of the waves, and we're trying to find the bulk modulus. So remembering what we know about sound waves, the velocity is the bulk modulus divided by the density of the material. So all we have to do is plug those two things in and we're good to go uh, there to calculate the bulk modulus because we know the speed and we know, uh, we know that. So for the velocity though, we were given 5.4 kilometers per second and we always want to work in meters per second. So let's go ahead and convert that. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters. Kilometers cancel with kilometers. And so the velocity 5.4 times 1,000 is going to be 5,400 meters per second. I know most of you can do that in your head, but I always like to write it down. The density was likewise given to us as 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter, and you don't want to use that. You always want to work in kilograms and meters, or kilograms per cubic meter when you're dealing with these guys. So let's go ahead and do that. The way to convert the grams to kilograms is really simple. That's 1,000 grams for one kilogram. And of course, that's going to cancel grams with grams. Now, to do the cubic centimeters, you might have a handy conversion factor memorized for that to go from cubic centimeters directly to cubic meters. But I do not. So the way I do it is I say that 100 centimeters is one meter. And we do it again, 100 centimeters is one meter. We do it again, 100 centimeters is one meter. And we cancel each one of those, two, three. We have centimeters cubed, so we're canceling all three of them. And we'll have meters cubed on the bottom. So rho is gonna be 2.7 divided by 1,000 times 100 times 100 times 100. And what you will get is 2,700 kilometers, I'm sorry, kilograms per cubic meter. Now we're in good shape. So we want to plug in what we know for V, which is 5,400. And under here, we're going to have the bulk modulus divided by 2,700. Okay, divided by 2,700. So to solve for B, we'll square both sides. We'll get 2.92 times 10 to the seventh. And on the inside here, we're just going to have B divided by 2,700 because we're just getting rid of the square root since we square both sides. Solve for B, we just multiply both sides by 2,700. So B, this times this, is going to give you 7.87 times 10 to the 10 pascals. And I don't even know if I told you, the unit for bulk modulus is pascals. When you look at the units of uh, volume divided by, well actually if you remember, it was uh, the, the bulk modulus was whatever pressure you apply divided by the change, the fractional change of volume. Well, here you've got volume divided by volume, so you have no units on the bottom at all. In the top, you have the pressure, which is Pascal. So the bulk modulus, the unit, is going to be in the, in the unit of pressure, which is Pascal's. So that is the answer, 7.87 times 10 to the 10 Pascal's. Now, for comparison, at that depth, in the earth, uh, at, the, at that depth, this is what the bulk modulus of the crust of the Earth is. Now, for comparison, the bulk modulus of steel just for giggles here, it's 16 times 10 to the 10 pascals. So at that depth in the earth, um, the, the bulk modulus, which is basically like the compressibility of steel, is similar to the compressibility of the earth's crust way down there. And that's just because, you know, it's under tremendous pressure down there, you know, just because you're so far under the earth's crust.